appear in a minute. Grab a scratch off too. I'd done quite a bit of homework leading up to the hunt. Slightly three to four forward. inches forward. Listening yeah. to podcasts, doing some reading, um, talking with folks, watching a lot of videos. Work with, and they were more speaking to archery shots, which I like because it's more precise. But as far as moving through the field, pursuing bears, next to none. Once I understood where we'd be hunting, I knew that is some of the most rugged country in the lower 48. <laughs> it's kind of awe-inspiring and imposing at the same time, definitely formidable, but kind of enticing. You're out there in wild country with wild animals and getting after it. To have the opportunity to do that in the spring, it was just, so cool and there's bulls everywhere and deer everywhere and we're bumping chucker and everything's just blooming and flourishing and you see these bears they're just flourishing in this wild country it was i was i was hooked that bear's in there still question is the best way to get up there Like every other time I've seen a bear, it just they just pop, even to the naked eye. The conundrum is that I think we found a pretty darn nice bear. He's got those rounded out cheeks, and those ears are on the side of his head. I think it's a nice boar. I also don't know, well, it's not that I don't know anything about judging bears. I don't, I haven't judged a lot of bears, a lot of winds. Not ideal. The approach over there would be a bomb slash tumble slash slide down a cliff across the bottom. Run up the opposite side about 300, 400 yards. Threw up. Hello. First day of hunting, we found a nice black bear and decided to bomb off of a ridge line into a, into a kind of a box canyon and up the other side and get in position to shoot this bear. Shooting light aside, I couldn't 100% absolutely definitively say it was the same bear. That's a wrap on day one. It looked a little smaller, but it was hard to say. It was so foggy through the scope, so. Let's fuck out of here though, because he's coming this way. Go up and over and drop out, so try not to screw him up too much. We got what I think is the better side of the coin, and we get to keep up. Day three of the hunt, second weekend. And we're basically running out of a base camp, just hiking up uh, from there. 
Let's do it. Gain an elevation up to the snow line. And we, we got to where we could see those drainages and it just didn't lay out the way I'd hoped. Near this cluster of trees. But we kept going a little further and going a little further out. And we came up over a ridge and right at the head of that drainage as soon as we sat down, I'm just like, oh, there's a bear. So we just camped out. He disappeared for probably damn near 30 minutes. Max fell asleep. All of a sudden, bear pops out. Got a really good look. Right away, I was like, that's a big bear. We're gonna make a move? Yeah, he's a nice bear. That's a really nice bear. I still don't know how to judge bears, but I think he's a nice bear. 800 yards, but moving away. The rib we got to would have been here, and the bear was on another rib here. The wind was kind of carrying up towards the ridge, and I was worried that if that bear beat us to the top, he'd, he'd wind us. The trajectory of that bear and us was on a crash course. And I'm expecting to run into this bear at any time. So, I mean, I'm gun shouldered coming around this rock and I'm just kind of panning right. And for whatever reason, I just felt the need to check back to my left. And Here's the bear, 30 yards, walking straight away from us. He just spins and opens up, completely broadside, but staring right at us. So I brought the gun up, I'm on him, and uh, just started squeezing the trigger, waiting for it to go off, and all of a sudden, Didn't have a round chambered. Racked another round, and as soon as I close the bolt, that bear just does a 180 and takes off. Within a few seconds of hauling ass through the snow, dropped to one knee. I held right behind his shoulder, pulled the trigger. I knew I hit him. I mean, it just, it wasn't a doubt in my mind. He kind of barreled over a cliff edge. I see him and he's not doing well, which you hate to see. So I laid out my pack on this cliff. And I've got a bipod on my gun. Shoot. Bear starts running faster and he disappears into this choked out brushy bottom. So we decided to drop through the cliffs, dropped about 300 yards. Thought I'd find him dead. I know this bear is hit bad just not the way you want it to go down. As soon as I come up over the top, he was maybe 15 yards. What do you think? Worth the effort? Definitely worth the effort. Definitely worth the effort. Wish it didn't go down the way it did, but he's dead. He's a beautiful bear. He's gonna eat well.
putting hands on that animal was was different than um, any experience I've had. It was definitely a little more moving. I definitely felt remorseful. You know, this was predator. It, it just felt different. Probably more than anything, I just had such a profound respect for this newfound appreciation of the strength of this animal. I had no idea. In this country they live in and thrive in is gnarly, man. I think I'll take more away from it with time. You know, this was a totally new hunt, new experience to me, and I'm like, I'm just gonna do this the same way I've done any other Western hunt. I'm just gonna try to give it all I got, and it worked out. Just all encompassing, man. Hell of a hunt. First bear. Beautiful bear. All right, let's find this trail, eh? Started hiking a little before 10, and I think we got back to the trucks a little after three in the morning. Relieved and stoked. And let's find a beer. Oh, I could go for a, a cold.